Okay. Um, this was very insulting to me, so I don't want none of y'all to laugh about it. Um, this was something that um a lot of females, a lot of young girls in my age that grew up in the fifties and the sixties, um, and pro and probably be the seventies. Um, remember the Brownies and the Girl Scouts and uh, were probably a member or part of that organization. I myself am a lifetime member of the Girl Scouts. I went up through the ranks. I was a Brownie and all that stuff. Uh, worked at the uh, camps. Um, come back. We'll come back and perform for the uh, campers. Uh, so anyway, I was a Girl Scout through and through. Okay, um, and so this kind of disturbed me. It kind of insult. It was just to add insult to injury because I have used it on resumes and I, I've been asked um, a, a lot of things. And actually, the Girl Scouts of America is an organization that has been around a long time. I, you know, and so, like I said, it's just a network. Um, there have been times when I've needed employment and I've needed certain things. I could always count on Girl Scouts or, you know, to um, put me in a position where I could uh, feed my family. You know, so like I said, this, this article was kind of bittersweet for me. Girl Scouts of America congratulates Amy Coney Barrett on her Supreme Court appointment before deleting the post because it was quickly viewed as a political and partisan statement. Well, I think so. I mean, I, I it, it, it cracks me. It just it shocks me. The Girl Scouts of America posted a message of congratulations on this social media pages featuring Amy Cohen and the four other female Supreme Court justices. The post was put up at around 1 p.m. Wednesday and taken down later that day after Barrett was sworn in Monday night. The post read, congratulations Amy, Co Amy Cohen Barrett on becoming the fifth woman appointed to the Supreme Court since its inception in 1789. It immediately faced criticism on social media of both the Girl Scouts and Barrett, who many liberals consider a threat to abortion rights. After deleting a tweet on Wednesday evening, the Girl Scouts clarified that the post congratulating Barrett was not a political statement. What say y'all? What say y'all? I mean, I, I, I've never remembered the Girl Scouts as an organization sending out um, any you know, special notice. Maybe, you know, I'm, it's just something I'm not aware about. You got Sandra Day O'Connor, right? You had, you got Elena, Elena Kagan, uh, Sonia Sotomayor, Amy Comey Barrett, and you had Ruth Bader Ginsburg. I don't ever remember um, seeing any kind of post or any kind of congratulatory letter or something that the because they always send me literature as well, you know, about what the Girl Scouts are doing, their finances and things of that nature. And, you know, how the, the cookie, uh, you know, it's fun when my point is, oh, my God, I have to really, really, um, you know, I you know, there's a lot of things that we're involved with, and we've probably been involved with for a long time, and we really don't know why, because we've never even challenged it or thought about it. Maybe our parents signed us up, which is what it what it was in my case. I just went through the ranks, so you know, and I just never quit. And and basically, like I said, um, I've only used the 
uh, moniker or the title of being a Girl Scout when it has been beneficial to me. I put it on the application, wonder what kind of social clubs you've had or if you did it to write a resume, it's good to put down that you've, you know, experienced these type of organizations. But I've never known them to be political. And if that is partisan, why would you just take the first time to do something like that on this chick right here? I don't like the way that sits. I really don't. That's my first story because, you know, we're going to do a little magazine thing type like today. Okay. The Girl Scouts of America congratulates Amy Comey, Coney Barrett. Hmm. Not a good look. You know, the, you know, here's the sad thing going on. Another story. Is that, what's the sad part about it is, you know, we can't understand that. You know, it's just like a fish head. It's, it rots from the top on down, right? And it's amazing to me that we can't see how low level of a vibration that we are operating off of. It's just really mind-blowing. Um, if I was to ask you five years ago, you know, maybe six years ago, because he's been president four years now, right? Okay, so um, let's go six years ago. We had our problems and there was differences and it was and I think let's let's take it to before Obama got to be elected president because it was a mess with Bush. However, it wasn't like that period after Reconstruction where y'all just went crazy and start killing us and doing all kinds of crazy um, lethargic things like what happened when you uh, when Obama was elected or after he was elected president. So I'm saying that to say, can't y'all see that the behavior is different on the, the energy is all messed up? And it's amazing to me that people are accepting this as normal behavior and they don't say like, damn, you know, how, how can you want to stay on the edge like this every single day of your life? And you got a person wielding your emotions like that and making you go you know, pretty much insane. You know, it's got you going insane. Uh, like, controlling how you feel about other people. Especially if they're the, op you know, the opposite party of you. It's just really sad, you guys. And it's really kind of scary. Just look at your behavior. And if you think this is normal, this, this is not normal. Y'all don't even know what normal is anymore. It's like... Anyway, Chris Como, um, he slammed that Miles Taylor guy for denying on CNN that he was the anonymous author. As the now unmasked whistleblower says that Trump wanted to gas, electrify, and shoot immigrants at the border. And this is what I was meaning, you know, when I was like, you know, you can't, you can't deal with people who are just so freaking over the top. Former Department of Homeland Security Chief Staff Miles Taylor revealed that Trump once said he wanted to sh um, immigrants to be gassed, electrified, and shot. Taylor made the claim during an interview with Como on CNN Wednesday, um, hours after he revealed himself to the author Anonymous. Taylor was criticized throughout Wednesday for his apparent part and played uh, his part, his parent part played in allowing the Trump border separation policy to be implemented. When asked um, how he allowed such a policy to be reenacted, I mean to be enacted, he denied supporting it, saying. He fought with his ass off to push back against the president in what he was trying to do. He didn't, he, he, he I, I just pushed back against it, he said. He, 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 he pushed his, he fought his butt off. Taylor also warned what he said would prove to be a catastrophic four years if Trump wins the second White House term next week. 
He said he fears the president will feel completely emboldened to pursue Nazi-like immigration policies, bring back border separation. Kumo put Taylor on blast for lying to fellow co-host Anderson Cooper uh, mere weeks ago when he denied that he was anonymous. Kumo asked why the public should believe him now when he blatantly lied before and why uh, should CNN keep him on the payroll as a contributor. You lied to us, Kumo said. You know, and, 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 you know, Taylor, who resigned from the White House last June, said he decided to strategically withhold his identity to force Trump to address his written accusations directly rather than personally attack him. When I published the warning, I said the, in the book that if asked, I would strenuously deny that I was the author. And here's the reason. We have seen over the course of four years that Donald Trump's preference is to find personal attacks and distractions and to pull the people away from the criticisms of his record. I wrote that work anonymously, anonymously to deprive him of that opportunity and to force him to answer the questions on their merit. Taylor also issued a personal apology to Anderson Cooper, insisting that he owes him an apology um, and, and a beer. You know, they love to have a beer, right? During the segment, Taylor was also quizzed by Como that if the Trump administration was as bad as he claimed in his op-ed, then why did he stay? Why? Why? Then why? Then why he didn't stay in the White House longer to counteract Trump's bad policies and then to help the country before it got out of hand? People ask me that all the time. If it was so bad, Miles, why didn't you stay? And my answer is because it was so bad on a daily basis. The things the president wanted us to do were unethical, immoral, un-American, and in some cases blatantly illegal. Now, for a time period, I think we did a pretty good job in one year of putting the bad ideas back in a box. My God, there, there was just so many failures. When asked to put some meat on the bones, Taylor offered an example of a discussion he allegedly shared with Trump in the Oval Office. Taylor claimed that he and the president had been talking about the immigrants, specifically women and children. Seeking refuge at the border when Trump asked the DHS to gas, electrify, or just shoot them. Kumo responded by asking, we're talking about women and children seeking a better life in the United States and fleeing violence and persecution, and the commander-in-chief is saying he wants to electrify them? Taylor said the president made the statement verbatim. Then, when you notice the shock on the faces of the people in the room, he reportedly said, well, maybe you could just shoot them in the legs to slow them down. And see, this is the reason why I said what I said in terms of me making a video about uh, Ice Cube. Um, you know, this guy needs to go at all costs. And if y'all think, in my opinion, that you're going to make any kind of deal with a devil like this when they never, first of all, never honored anything that they've done, ever, 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 for us, a Native American, or anybody else. And in my opinion, they're not going to. However, that's another story. Here is the meat and butter of this story, though. I learned a lot of things from my father. I sat at the feet of my father. And some of the most valuable lessons that stuck with me, because he produced me. And I wanted to please him, make him proud. And if you think for one minute that Donald Trump, who is the son of a Nazi, Facebook uh, did a uh, whatever they do to my comment for saying that, but it's public record. It's knowledgeable. His father was a Klansman. He marched with him. 
What do you call that? So it's not hard for me to understand people like that will put your black ass in the gas chamber. It's, that was okay with them. And so I was so insulted because I don't think you should be playing around with a person like Trump. Yes, I know all of the presidents have been racist. That is not the issue here. But you're dealing with a mentally ill man and a psychopath. And when he do some stuff like that on a major scale, because y'all giving him four more years, and then say we can't be no more better off, worse off, well, you're going to see. You're going to see just how bad um, it really can be with a Nazi at, at the helm and somebody that's just hell-bent on shutting down democracy and being a king. You're going to see. All that stuff you hear, people discouraging you, they got all the answers. I'm not saying I do. But the illusion of a democracy is definitely better than having um, a, a dictator at the helm. That's just my opinion. Especially when that's a psychopath. Um, and those of y'all who don't believe me, you just don't believe me. I don't want to learn all my lessons by seeing them materialize and manifest firsthand. But I know one thing. Donald Trump should not get a second term in office. I don't care who up in there as long as Donald Trump is not in there. Because I don't, I don't care all this craziness that some people say, oh, you know, he's such a narcissist. We can talk to him and we can uh, get him to do anything. But he's a psychopath as well. So that means he can do that on one end and on the other end, usher your ass right into his concentration camp. You don't deal with people that's got psychotic of uh, behaviors like that. So that's why I disagree with anybody that says that. Well, we can get him because he's a narcissist. We can get him to do. Y'all don't know narcissism. And you don't know psychotic. And you don't know seriously mental illness. You don't. Because you never know what a nuts, nut is going to do. Push buttons, all types of stuff. So that is definitely the wrong mindset to have, in my opinion. You hear me? So let's turn the page on this story right here. Just letting y'all know that the whistleblower, Anonymous, that finally came out, is he was the chief of staff, Miles Trailer. Taylor, I'm sorry. Huh. All right, and the last story that we're going to give up is, uh, like Ann Murray said, we sure could use a little good news today. Let's just leave it on a um light note. And that night light note is um, Ed Sheeran. And he supports Marcus Rashford's battle against child food poverty by launching a breakfast club at his bistro. And that's great. I mean, because with a lot of stuff going on um, to give away and to know that it's a lot of poverty and it's a lot of people hungry, especially the kids who are in hostage situations, um, at least somebody is thinking about the children. So multi-millionaire singer has provided a hot breakfast to any child who qualifies for free school meals through Notting Hill restaurant Birdie Blossoms. The business is the latest to get behind Rossford initiative after Tory MPs rejected his push to provide kids with free meals during the holidays. Manchester United and England striker Rashford has since hailed business owners across Britain for supporting his campaign and calling them superstars. Rashford's online petition to end child 
food poverty has accumulated more than a million signatures since it was launched on um, October 14th. Ed Sheeran responded <clears throat> to Marcus call for the deprived children to receive free half-term meals by opening the breakfast club in his West London Bistro. Uh, and to push for an awareness for children in poverty, not eating. Sharing the news on the establishment's Instagram page. In these difficult times, this is what Sharon wrote. Bertrees want to offer anyone who is normally entitled to a free school meal or who is struggling in these strange times to eat a, a, a hot breakfast. Drop in between 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. tomorrow or 8 a.m. and 11 p.m. for the rest of the week. And we'll be offering hot breakfast food and a hot and cold drink to the kids. No questions asked. Whether you eat in or take out, we are behind you. And we love you. Spread the word. Thank you, Ed. And um, it's good to see somebody doing something uh, remotely outside of themselves to help somebody, um, especially when you're dealing with poverty. So I just thought that we could use a little good news. And for me, no, that just balance the scale just a little bit more. All right. Like what you hear, y'all. Please like, subscribe, share, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.